So I, I, this message is on the fruit of the last days, kingdom of power and glory. It's, it's what he wants to do. It's, you know, we talk about fruit, we think of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, you know, long-suffering, goodness, kindness. That's a good thing to have. But I believe the Lord is going to be giving us a fruit of signs, wonders, and miracles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, the last days. I really believe we're in the last days. How many of you believe that? And it seems like it's ever more evident. Now China and Russia are starting to align, and it's almost like Ezekiel 38 and 39 is almost upon us. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I don't know for sure, but <clears throat> the one world government is, is pushing so hard. The, the elites, the, the trillionaires and the billionaires are wanting to try to rule the world. They think they know what's best for the world, and that would mean get rid of the weak and let the strong survive. That's the whole temperament of, of communism, Marxism, is to, to, for the good of man, but really underneath, it's for the good of the elite. We understand that. Oh, by the way, we got taken off. One of our videos got deleted on YouTube. We got an email. <laughs> it said, it said uh, misinformation about the elections. <laughs> And that was two years ago, and they're just now getting around to doing it. You know, who knows what else? They could, they could cancel us all together, and that's okay. I don't care. So, so it's good. So the last day signs, wonders, and miracles, they'll be accessed, I believe, through the intimacy with God. And what, what really stirred me in this was Randy Clark's little book on intimacy for healing. And in that book, he talks about how a, uh, we abide in him, and he abides in us, and then we ask what we will, and it's done for us, and we'll go over that in a second. God wants us to be prepared to begin to flow in miracles, signs, and wonders. He wants each of us, not just the evangelists, the pastors, the prophets, he wants each of us to begin to function and flow in the spiritual realm, to begin to impart things to people. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the things get darker in our society, as the world grows darker, Isaiah 60 says, we will arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us, right? Even though there's deep darkness all across the earth, you and I have the responsibility and the ability to begin to flow in the miraculous, in the signs and the wonders, to begin to have per spiritual perception, understand with our hearts and our minds what God's up to, and what he wants to do. He wants to use us. And in us, he, uh, he, let, me read, let me just read this paragraph. Last day, signs, wonders, and miracles will be accessed through intimacy with God. Intimacy means abiding in him and he in us as we open our hearts for heavenly manna. This manna is the words fed or revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus modeled for us how to walk with God in an intimate and loving way, didn't he? Amen? He only did what the Father was doing by seeing what the Father was, was doing. He actually saw what the Father was doing, and he emulated it, John 5, 19. And Jesus is the bread of life. He's the very word of God, and he's the only way to the Father. When he taught us to pray, he revealed steps showing us how to walk in the Spirit and position ourselves to receive from the Father in heaven. Jesus told us in John 15 to abide in him and his words abide in us. And then we can ask what we desire and it will be done for us, making us fruitful. I believe the Lord was talking here about the fruit of signs, wonders, and miracles. When we bear this kind of fruit, then God the Father is glorified, John 15, 16. You can go back and do all these scriptures uh, later if you want. So probably a good thing to study. Um, so I, be, I, I actually, I am beginning to start to pray the Lord's Prayer every single day. Now I missed yesterday, and I could feel it. 
and it's not a thing of works, but when God's starting to lead you to do something, you know, and you're really connecting with it, and you leave off on it, it's like uh, you're missing something, you know? And so I just kind of want to go over this, this prayer of the Lord. He taught us how to pray. It's how we connect with God so that we can flow in signs, wonders, and miracles. It's what he has prescribed for us to begin to communicate with God and ask him for the things that we need for everyday spiritual life. Okay? i got to get my glasses ready because my scriptures here are in a smaller font. Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. This then is how you should pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name, or sacred be your name. It, it really means sacred, revere, reverence to his name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The famous decree, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So important. We can't receive the blessings of God without forgiveness. Amen? For ourselves and for those who have hurt us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And this is important also, right? Are you all with me this morning? A quiet bunch. Amen. Amen. That's what I need. Stir me up. That's what it says. Stir one another up. So we are, we're praying. If we pray this prayer, it includes everything we need. Everything. He taught us how to pray, how to communicate, how to how to receive from the Father. And so he says, and, and number one says, praying to the Father whose name is sacred. And number two, his kingdom come, his will be done. Number three, give us today, this day, our daily bread. And so I want to kind of park there for a little bit. The manna of, from heaven is what he wants us to receive every single day. He wants us to have the spiritual manna. He wants us to be fed with food that only he can give us. Many times we try to reach God through our intellect, through our mind, you know, and through, through just our effort. And God's saying, ask for the bread. Ask for the manna. And he'll feed us the spiritual food that we need. He'll begin to open our eyes. He'll begin to open our ears to see. Deuteronomy 8.3 says, So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and he fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you to know that man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So there's, a, there's, an, act, there's an action of us actually opening our ears and listening and receiving what God is speaking to us. And this is key for us to begin to flow in these last days in signs, wonders, and miracles. God is going to be pouring out his spirit, and he already is. He's been doing it in many other countries, just amazing, the power that's been being released. But now it's starting to hit the United States of America, and each of us have a part in this. God is wanting to raise each one of us up to begin to disciple and preach the gospel. He wants us to open our mouths, open our ears, and be a conduit for what he has for this world. So where was I? From every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And so Jesus, let's, read, let's read Luke, uh, Luke 4, 4. Let's read that one. Jesus answered him saying, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And he's quoting this verse. But by every word of God. He's speaking to the devil. Jesus confirmed it, that we're not to live by just the food we eat, but by every word, that utterance that comes from God. So you and I have the responsibility to listen, to hear what the Spirit's saying. Revelations, he talks to the churches. He, let, this, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And many times the prophets had to come and say, you are a dull of heart, you are dull ears. And we have to shake ourselves, get the wax out of our ears, you know, so to speak, our spiritual hearts, and begin to have intimacy with him, a place of abiding, a place where we can walk in the presence of God, where we consciously make an effort 
to talk to him. Simple. But there's so many things that try to steal the word out of our heart, right? Like the parable of the sower and the seed, the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things. And our, our nation is full of those things. And I firmly believe that we have, we have completed the cycle of idolatry in the United States of America. We have so chased after mammon and riches that the judgment of God is beginning to fall upon our nation. We have inept leaders. We have, we, have, we have rumors of wars. We have so much darkness right now that's happening. The government is changing so quickly and has been changing without us even knowing it. It's just now getting exposed. And I'm not here to get on the government, bad government bandwagon. I'm here to say we have a part in what God wants to do in this nation. Because many times when he, the judgments begin to be released because grace is lifted because of sin, God then is still doing something in the shadows. And it comes forth into the light because God doesn't want anyone to perish. He loves the nations. He created the nations. He one day will judge the nations as the sheep and the goats. And he wants our nation to be great again. And he wants the kingdom of God to be even greater. And until he comes, we have to occupy, right? We have to be stewards of what he has given us. To the measure of what he has shown us. We need to be faithful with that. To begin to share that, do that, walk it, talk it, be it. Do the things he's called us to do. And we can't do that without getting the manna from heaven. We've got to hear the word. We've got to hear, we've got to read the word. We've got to consume the word. It's got to be the manna. You have to get up in the morning and go gather the manna. It isn't automatic, right? We have to gather it, and we can't try to heap up too much, like because when they did, it would rot. So it's time for us to begin to get our daily bread. We have to say, God, give us this day our daily bread. Sincerely ask him for it, and he will begin to speak to you through his word, by the spirit, through dreams and visions and miracles. And many of us have experienced this, I know. I just wanted to, I wanted to bring and reiterate some of these things that we need to remind ourselves of. So Jesus is the very word or the words of God even. By him, all things are held together through Jesus Christ, Colossians 1.17. And then John 1, verse 1, says the word was eternal. He was with God, and he was God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. For the law was given through Moses, verse 17, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The word was made flesh, it dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Son full of grace and truth. Now, next page, B. John 15, verse 4 and 7 says that if we abide in Jesus, this is the good part, and his words abide in us, there's the word again, right? If his words abide in us, then we ask what we desire, and it's done by the Lord for us. That's a huge promise. That's also a huge requirement. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Wow. So abide here means to remain, not to depart, to continue to be present. <laughs> you can't walk out on God. You know, you got to spend time in his presence to maintain unbroken fellowship with one and adhere to his party. You know, in the kingdom of heaven, it's a one-party system. It's not democratic. He is the party. Right? Yes. He's the party. And if you want to join the party, then we'll party. We'll have something to rejoice about. I've been talking to my grandkids about it. What is rejoice? It means heaven joy again. Rejoice, Right? What does enjoy mean? Enter into the joy. Enjoy, right? 
I love those hyphens that go between. Enjoy. We can enjoy him. He refresh. Refresh. Bring us back to the freshness. Bring us back to the manna, the true living God, the bread from heaven. Jesus came as the bread from heaven, and he's returned. He's sitting on the throne, and his Holy Spirit now has been poured out to you and I, and he says, it's as much as you want, as my wife would say many times. It's as much as you want, and we have to just let him fill us with his Holy Spirit. Yield to him. Begin to consume him. Begin to eat his flesh, drink his blood. We begin to, to take upon us the same mind that Christ had when he was on the earth. He fills us with compassion, with boldness, with zeal, with joy. And we begin to go out and into the highways and the byways and the hedges, and God uses us. This week, we went up to, down to Carbondale to, to visit uh, Bob Aguilar. Many of you remember Bob Aguilar? A few of us went down there to see him. And praise God, when I was in Walmart about 10 years ago, he, I, met, I ran into him. I hadn't seen him since uh, Christian Fellowship Church. You remember Bob, don't you? Remember Bob Aguilar? Yeah. Anyway, I, can't, I ran into him, and it was a time when I was feeling so dry and so dead. And I just told him, I've been just really dry. And boy, you know Bob, he just, he just put his hand right on my chest and prayed for me in the fire of God burned in my chest, and God began to refresh me and restore me. It was such a blessing. And then the Lord brought Bob to us in the plaza at the prayer room, and he was a, a real tremendous support, tremendous support. And it was such a blessing. And I never quite understood his anointing. He's a little bit different, you know, on, on that, on, in the way he ministers. And so, you know, I was, I've always been very structured, you know, very analytical, I remember, Dennis, when you used to preach over at uh, Christian Fellowship Church, you know. I was, I was still getting over some of the, my, my, my reservations, you know, about the move of God. Well, no problem now. I'm, I'm over all that. God's been dealing. But we went to see Bob, and, I, and we went down there and just had a good time, and then we had a time of prayer, and, and the anointing came. It just, I, I had a feeling it was going to happen, and he prayed for me, and he just said, ask what you want. That's what you want. And I said, I want souls. I want souls. I want to see the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. I want souls. And it's his promise to us. We can stir one another up to good works, right? No? Amen. We can do that. We can stir one another up to good works. It doesn't matter if we're 65 or older. And I'll be 65 here shortly. My youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm going to run and not be weary. I'm going to walk and not faint. Amen? How much do you want? Holly baked us a sourdough bread. And I've been carving that thing off and eating on it all week, and it is so delicious. I can't eat it all at once. It's huge. It was this big and about that high. You know, it's... You got a sourdough, you got to really take a sharp knife and get it cut. But the outside is tough, but the inside is moist and fluffy and, and just delicious. So it takes work sometimes to get the Holy Spirit in, in you and in communion with you. You've got to get in the Word, you've got to be praying. And it's not a matter of, of works, it's a matter of you get to. And you have to have a want-to. And when we have the want-to, then he want, he's so excited because he wants it more than we want it. It's like a father with their son. You know, I always wanted my son to go hunting with me. And, he, you know, he did. He did. He went hunting. He wasn't, he wasn't really his favorite thing. All my daughters went hunting with me except for two. Two didn't like the sight of blood, you know, so. <laughs> and that's okay. But, but. God wants to spend time with us. He's interested in what we're interested in. But he also wants us to be interested in what he's interested in. Because he has our good in mind. He cares about every part of our lives, our families, our friends, our neighbors. And he wants to use us. In order to use us, he has to feed us from himself. 
Matthew 16, verses 16 through 19, Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom to the church through the active and living revelation of Jesus himself being the Christ. The, you know, this is where he told Peter, you know, he said, whom do you say I am? And Jesus, Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, it's the very revelation of the word of God made flesh, made human. He was incarnated from heaven to be the savior of the world. These are the keys of the kingdom. And I'll read it here. You got it on your paper. Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, the rock of Revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And if you read it in Luke, it says, whatever's already been bound in heaven will be bound on earth. Whatever has been bound uh, loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth. So what we're understanding by that is that in our, in our, from our perspective, we're binding it, and it's like it's being done. But from God's perspective, he's already planned it before the foundation of the world. And he's got all these miracles waiting for you and I just to tap into them. So whatsoever has already been bound in heaven can now be bound through you. You can bind the enemy. Whatever's been loosed already in heaven can now be loosed through you and I. We can loose the move of God. We can loose the presence of God. We can loose people from their chains of darkness. We can, we can see the kingdom of heaven begin to manifest here on earth. And in doing that, we're storing up treasures. We're storing up rewards. Someday, he's soon, he's coming. We'll hear the trumpet. Hallelujah. Little point C there. The fruit of intimacy with obedience brings the kingdom with power. Intimacy, here I say, equals loving God and obedience to him. That's the part of the diet that a lot of people don't like, <laughs> right? It's obeying his commandments, you know? It's like, well, if you love somebody, you're going to want to, to help them, right? You're not going to want to offend them. If you love God, you're not going to want to transgress against his commandments. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, of course, and there's... There's the grace of God, of course, not as a license to sin, but as that he loves us and he'll pick us up when we fall. Amen? Aren't you glad he does that? It's so wonderful. 1 Corinthians 13, Paul, the apostle, he tells us that love is the more perfect or complete way to operate in the gifts, in the signs, the wonders, and the miracles. I'm trying here. My computer's not responding. There we go. First John 5, 3, love equals keeping God's commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Amen? Hallelujah. So Deuteronomy 11, 13 through 15 Let's read that. He says, And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather the rain, gather your grain, your new wine, and your oil. And I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. This is the promise of God. Hallelujah. So let's go on to number four, the next part of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts, our sins, as we forgive our debtors, those who have sinned against us. And this is important. Uh, a root of bitterness in us can, springing up can defile us, the Word of God says. And so this is something that, that, that is it's like a, a root that we have to get pulled out, like a dandelion root. If you don't get it all, it grows back, right? How many of you experienced that? 
You tell, I'll just pull that dandelion out and it won't grow again. And there it goes again, another big flower. <laughs> They're very prolific. You got to dig down and get all the root. If there's any bitterness in our hearts, it's going to eventually come up and defile us. And so we have to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I forgive those who are, have hurt me. I forgive those who have transgressed against me. I forgive those who have been bitter towards me, and I refuse to be bitter towards them. Forgive me for being bitter towards people. Forgive me for being angry towards people without just cause. There's a place for anger. It says be angry and sin not, right? And so we got to watch it. we got to say, Lord, show us, cleanse us, wash us, forgive us, Lord. And Bill Johnson used to say, if it takes a thousand times when someone comes to your mind, forgive them every single time. And the more you do that, I've experienced this, when people have lied about me and said things about me, the more I do that, the less it has control over me. And eventually, it has no control at all. In fact, that's why he says, I believe, to pray for our enemies. Amen? Because not that he wants to bless their sins, he, he doesn't want anyone to die and go to hell, that's for sure. But he wants us to be free from the chains that have been holding us hostage. And so we need to forgive. It's so important. I can't stress it. It's, it's important. The words of God, they bring cleansing, they bring revelation, they bring wisdom, and they bring understanding. Now, I've got quite a few scriptures here in Psalms, but they're so good, so let's just run through them, okay? Psalm 119. One, blessed are the undefiled in a way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. Whoa, there's some righteousness there. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. <laughs> there's the humanity right there. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? There's the word again. We got to have that word. Got to have the word in us. He came in the flesh and he's back, with G he's back with the Father now, sitting on the throne, and the Holy Spirit is residing within us, just longing to feed us the Word. The Word, the Word, the Word. He's living. He's alive. Your Word have I hidden my heart, let's see, that I might not sin against you. Um, let's see. Verse 10. I, I skipped one. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. That's his words. His commands are for our good. Just like you tell your child, don't touch that stove. We've heard that so many times, you know, because it's for their good. Not you're, trying, you're not trying to bind heavy chains around their neck. He's not trying to bind anything around us either. He wants his words to be in us to protect us, his commands. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's powerful. <clears throat> That's powerful. Verse 89, Psalm 119 says, there's so much of the word in here, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Verse 130, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Verse 147, I rise before the dawn of the morning and I cry for help. There it is. I got scripture here. When you rise in the morning, cry out for help. God help me this day to see. I hope in your word. We're at verse 148. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Anybody getting tired of hearing the word? You better not be. I mean, if you do, that's your choice. That's your choice. If we don't have the word, we don't have the bread of life. If we don't have the word, then we'll starve spiritually. We've got to get into the word and get the word into us. 
not speaking of the written word, without the spirit, it's dead. We've got to get the life of God in us, and it takes faith to do that. You have to believe that he is and that he's going to reward you when you diligently seek him, right? This is good stuff. I'm going to take some home myself. I'm going to wrap it up, put it in a Tupperware. Showing my age there, Tupperware. Rubbermaid now, right? Hallelujah. Verse 162, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. Verse 169, let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. There it is again. Hallelujah. And then in Proverbs 4, it's the instruction of the Father's words. And this is, this is much like what God wants to say to us, I believe. Verse 1, hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. He also taught me, verse 4, and he said to me, let your heart retain my words. Whew. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You want faith? Get the word in your heart. Let it soak into your heart. Meditate on it. Begin to confess it. Begin to profess it. And watch the faith of God rise in your heart. Verse 10. My son, hear my and receive my sayings. And the years of your life will be many. Amen. Got many, many more in Jesus' name. Moses was 80 when he got started, by the way, in his ministry. You ever think about that? It's like, come on. You know, tell your body, no. <laughs> tell your body, your mind, ha you get your mind in line with the spirit and tell your body, I'm not going there. I've got many years ahead of me. You know, it's as much as you want. And so, let's just, let's just take God's promises literally. Amen? They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Ooh, there it is. Come on. Some of you need to jump on that and take that. It's health to my flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Amen? This is good. I think this is good. Do you think this is good? This is his word. This is not anything I came up with. This, he's been around for eternity. And in the linear of time, he put us here to begin to experience him and to know him and to understand him. And it's such a privilege to be able to read his word and let it become alive. After you eat that sourdough bread, it's like, mmm, you just want to take a nap. You know, you ever eat a full meal, you know, after you worked a hard day? It's like, oh. Be warmed and be filled, right? Amen. It's good. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. Most of us know this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It's the word, again. It's the word being mixed with faith in a relationship, an experience with him, the hypostasis. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It means it's the assurance in your heart that you know that you know that you know that you know. Whenever God uses, used me in the gifts of, of healing, there's, there's, or the word of knowledge is that I, I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. There's times when I didn't know and he still did it. But that's the grace of God. Like the little boy, remember the little boy in Africa that had the snake bite or the, uh, they didn't know whether it was a snake bite or a, a spider bite. Leg was swollen up, hard as a rock. He just touched it and he screamed. Pastor Ben and I prayed for him. And then I said, this Boy, you need to get him to a doctor. You know? <laughs> My faith level was like down here. But we had just seen God heal deaf ears and blind eyes. Knees, a 99-year-old man, his knees were healed. He went walking home without a limp. It was, it was glorious. There were words of knowledge like I, you wouldn't believe going, and they were just saying, wow, this is real. This is all this amazing. They were just amazed, you know. It was just like the book of Acts. And then 
this kid, I didn't have the faith really to believe, but we prayed nonetheless. We agreed. By the time he got home, he was walking on that leg. They sent me videos of him doing this. <laughs> I saw devils cast out. You know, God, this is coming here. Get ready. Get ready. It's coming here. Get in the word. Fast and pray. Seek his face. And God will use us in a way that we wouldn't believe is possible in our natural minds. But through his word, we know that he's going to do great exploits through us. Great actions, great deeds. It's as much as you want. James 5, 16. Confess your trespasses one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man avails much. So get, this, get the junk out, you know. Confess it to somebody. If you got junk, confess it. That's the way to get rid of it. Get it out in the open. Then you can scrub it, you know. <laughs> You got to bring the garment to the table, right? If you got stains in it, you got to work on it. And so God wants us to, con through confession, we're bringing our, our faults to the table. And then God, we say, Holy Spirit, come and change us, help us. And we pray for one another so that we can be healed. And it's so necessary. Many of us have pain in our hearts from the past, and it's a lifetime process of God just bringing us to himself. We were born into sin, and now he's taking us into a glorious realm of the Spirit, but we have a mind that is yet to be renewed. So each day, ask God, how can I change my mind? How can I renew my mind? Because when you do that, Romans 12, 1 and 2, it's so that he can show his perfect will of God in your life. He can't do it in our old way of thinking. He has to begin to transform us, metamorphosis, like a butterfly from a cocoon, change us into a completely different type of thinking to prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Amen? Because when we stand before him, we're going to be like Isaiah. It's going to be like, oh, woe is me, I am undone. But then God can take the coal through a messenger and touch our lips, heal our minds, Touch us, and we can become a blessing. Even here on this earth, we can, we can receive that, that change. Okay, let's move along here. I'm almost done, actually. God wants to bear or manifest the fruit of the power of God, which is different than the fruit of the Spirit, like love, joy, peace, etc., not to diminish the fruit of the Spirit at all. It's gonna, we're going to need it. We certainly do, and we'll need the character of Jesus Christ to be able to handle the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that will be coming in us and through us. Do you believe that? you believe God's going to begin to manifest even more miracles in these last days? Well, we, we need to have the fruit of the Spirit. We need to be humble. We need to be long-suffering with people, gentle and kind, meek and lowly like Jesus was. And people will be drawn to us. And that's one thing else I want to mention. When we went down to Carbondale, Bob mentioned how that God, he always has these testimonies, and they're just powerful, how he, he meets people, and he, he just gets in there with compassion, and they begin to cry and weep, and he prays for them, and God touches people, and he says, I touched a guy at the convenience store just across the river, you know, we were down in Carbondale, where all those rivers are, and so on the way back, we had to stop, we were a little bit older, so we had to stop to use the bathroom, you know, I was with three ladies, that's my excuse. Anyway, and I went in there, and I went up to, to buy something, and I started witnessing. And I, the Lord had done such a deep work in my heart. He was, I was, you know me, I'm wired. I slowed down. I had such shalom, breeze, peace. And I began to just talk to him and look him in the eye. And he opened up to me that he'd been going to AA. And I said, for alcohol? He goes, no, for drugs. You know? I said, well, look, can I pray for you? He goes, yeah. He said, grabbed his hand right across the counter. And Karen, Karen Barr was with us. And she started bowing her head and praying, you know. And I, I prayed for him right there for him to have deliverance. And I bound the demons <laughs> in his life. 
it, it, it was so powerful. And this is, the, this is what God wants to begin to do with each of us, more and more and more. And he's doing it, I know, but he's going to increase that. It's powerful. He has greater works for us in the character of compassion that Jesus had. Come unto me, all you who are heavy, uh, weary and heavy laden, laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. This is the heart that God wants to put in us, to have the character of Christ, to be meek and lowly and have compassion towards people. Amen? Some save out of the fire. Some, some it's going to be some hard preaching. Others, it's going to be love. God will feed us the words we need when we need them, if we trust him. So the greater works are for us, John 14, verse 11 to 17. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly or truly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do also, I'm sorry, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. The sky is not the limit. <laughs> it's beyond the skies. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You know, we got we to gotta get out there and risk. We got to start risking through love. Be willing to fail. Be willing to pray for somebody and not see them healed. I don't understand why everybody's not healed, but it, I'm not going to let it stop me. Are you? Let him do what he wants to do. Believe him. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I think many times we don't see miracles because we're not walking in holiness. We're not walking in a sanctified life. And we've got to every day get washed in the blood, washed in the river of God. Let the Holy Spirit cleanse us and take out of us the things that are that they're offensive to God. And I will pray the Father if you do this, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells in you and will be in you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the promise. To you, to your children, to as many as are afar off. I think it's Acts 2, 27 and 28. As, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And he's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? He's calling. He's calling. And it's in a small, still voice many times. To slow down. It's hard for me. But when I do, I hear. I hear. And God responds. He speaks to me. I'm only just saying this by way of example because we all need this, right? Amen? Okay. John 16, 23 and 24. I'm going to end with this scripture. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. We have access to the heavenly Father. He taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven. And he wants us to go right to the Father because we are his children. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are sons and daughters. We've been adopted. We've been grafted in. And so now we have the same privileges that Jesus has. We go to the Father. You will ask me nothing. But, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. What joy we get when one of our kids gets saved, right? What joy we get when they get filled with the Holy Spirit. What joy we get when they get healed of an infirmity. What joy we get when someone else gets healed or delivered or saved. It's power. And then we begin to have joy, unspeakable, full of glory because of what he's doing. 
These last days are going to be the most difficult, yet the most glorious times, I believe, for the lovers of God who are looking for his appearing. So while we wait, we are to bear the supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit of God, the fruit of the signs, wonders, miracles, doing the works of God by the power of the Holy Spirit and not by our own might or our own strength. Amen? This spiritual fruit, however, does not leave out the Galatians 5 fruit of the Spirit in our character, as I said earlier, but it, in fact, increases the importance of it even the more as the days get more and more difficult, yet more glorious. Signs, wonders, and miracles, as well as healing and the gifts of the Spirit are needed for us to fulfill the Great Commission in preaching the gospel and discipling people, as well as nations. That's what he's called us to do. This is the good news, coffee house. We're the, this is the womb of what God wants to do. And, and the word you gave, Paula, was a confirmation to me because he spoke to me when we were first getting into this that I, I felt like we would start the coffee house in here. Um, but I was wanting to, you know, let everyone, let God speak to the whole, you know, and it seems like he's brought it back around. And now... This is going to be a place of peace and safety for young people and old alike. And I believe God's going to be moving powerfully. Amen? So we're going to be preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We're going to be discipling people. Amen? And our prayers are heard. It's already happening. Have you all watched the news of this Asbury revival and how it's spreading to other colleges now? I can see us setting our tent up at Mac. W whatever. If they need a tent, I'll be glad. Let's go. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your words. We thank you, Father, that you've equipped us, that you've given us a way to pray to you and take care of everything that needs to be taken care of through the, the prayer that was taught to the disciples that is to us also. So, Father, I ask that you would help us, Lord, to every day to hear your voice, to, to receive your word, to feast on you, the true manna, that which comes from heaven, Father. I pray you would help us change our minds and our, our thinking, Lord, about who you are and about what we think you are and show us the truths and the, deeper, the deepness, Lord, the depths, Lord, of your spirit so that we can see the signs the wonders, and the miracles, God. There can be signs that, that, that illuminate and point to you. There can be wonders that make us wonder. And there can be miracles that only you can do through healing, through devils being cast out. Redemption, Lord, for all the mankind, Lord. Just in Jesus' name, amen.